Morning guys, everything new under the sun. Here's your prophecy update for uh, Monday, May 20th. It appears as if we are on the brink of war with Iran. And uh, this uh, includes Israel and the United States. <clears throat> There's several things going on here. We have citizens being evacuated. We have um, the U.S. Um, looking to um, possibly get 120,000 troops in Iraq. We have some um, strikes near the U.S. Embassy in uh, Iraq. <clears throat> and we have this peace plan coming up, which uh, is supposed to be coming up, and we're counting by weeks now. And um, you know um, that I believe that there needs to be significant tension, even military escalation, um, if anybody is to implement a peace deal. And what do we see um, rising up in, uh, related to Iran? It's just that. And uh, it appears that we're on the brink uh, of war. Let's take a look at a couple articles. This is from Debka.com. Um, so um, I don't know if I have it. Oh, yes. Let's start off with this one. Israel struck... Um, uh, no, this one isn't it. Uh, Israel struck Damascus last night, uh, or, or over the weekend, rather. Syria claims Israel attacked targets near Damascus. Syrian media reports aerial defense system shot down luminous objects coming from Israel. Sounds of explosions were heard in the vicinity of the Syrian capital. Remember, Isaiah 17 uh, is very much uh, uh, in the game here, uh, possibly on the brink of uh, being fulfilled itself. Syrian media rep uh, claim that explosions are the result of Israeli airstrike on the country. Uh, the official news agency, SANA, reported that the country's aerial defense systems targeted luminous objects coming from occupied territories, sh shouting, uh, shooting down a number of them, um, they say. So the anti-aircraft uh, system uh, in operation around Syria. Um, and let's see here. Rocket attack near U.S. Baghdad uh, Embassy had Iran's signature. So Iran's doing, <clears throat> they're really um, getting all their proxy uh, militias uh, in gear here for attacks to dissuade the U.S. from the sanctions, from the buildup, etc. And, and they're really fighting a, a significant uh, proxy war uh, at this point in time. And so with that, we have the, the strikes on the U.S. Embassy. Uh, we have reports of the United States uh, evacuating all non-emergency personnel from the U.S. Embassy uh, because of uh, these attacks. Both sides said they don't seek war, yet U.S.-Iranian war tensions were notched up against Sunday, that's just yesterday, by a single rocket that missed the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad's green zone. U.S. President Donald Trump was furious. If Iran wants to fight... Um, that will be the official end of Iran. Never threaten the United States again, he tweeted. Uh, so what does um, um, Iran's IRGC uh, chief general say? Hossein Salami piled on the anti-U.S. Uh, provocations by commenting on Iranian TV. The difference between us and them is that they are afraid of war and don't have the will for it. Um, and so that's what <clears throat> Iran is saying. And Iran is saying they're not going to come to the table to talk with uh, the U.S. This is what they've stated. And so effectively all that's left uh, is war at this point. Um, Iran is directly involved in the sabotage on the tankers. Iran precisely calculated sabotage attacks on the four tankers to fall short of sinking them or causing casualties. It likewise computed the drone attacks to damage without destroying Saudi pumping stations in the same way the Katyusha rocket launched against Baghdad's fortified uh, green zone Sunday uh, night had a, sh uh, had a shock effect without causing real harm. This is a plausible deniability for Iran and also not big enough strikes um, that it would uh, prompt all at war. Um, Iran doesn't want to do that. They just want to annoy uh, the U.S. enough that our U.S. kind of backs off at this point in time. They don't think the U.S. really wants to go to war. And I'm sure the U.S. doesn't really want to go to war. Uh, but this is, um, I, Iran is really uh, trying to stoke and provoke uh, a fight in the Middle East. Because uh, what is their eschatology? Their eschatology is about a holy war. And their eschatology is about their own um, Jesus coming back and, and, and uh, saving all, all the Muslims uh, from the Christians, effectively. And um, getting rid of the uh, little Satan and the great Satan, uh, the, uh, this Israel and the U.S., 
Bahrain asked its citizens to leave Iran and Iraq. Bahrain apparently thinks that there is something coming imminent on the horizon. U.S. allied Bahrain warned its citizens on Saturday against travel to Iraq and Iran and asked those already there to return, it says, immediately for their safety. Unstable regional circumstances, dangerous developments, and potential threats. The warning comes amid shimmering tensions between the U.S. and Iran. So we have uh, what appears to be the Middle East on the brink of war. Uh, U.S. leading this as it's significantly uh, built up its military resources uh, in the Persian Gulf, all pointed at Iran, and the battlefield uh, is possibly just going to be uh, Iraq, effectively. And uh, John Holler uh, that mentioned uh, yesterday, um, he he was talking about this as well, and saying that you know I, I, Iraq uh, and Syria aren't really mentioned. Uh, in some of the end time Bible prophecies, not certainly not after Isaiah 17. Where are they? Are they taken out of the picture? Are they no longer relevant? And uh, that could be the battleground for um, the upcoming war. And it seems imminent. Uh, you know, boy, if, if they're going to release a peace plan, are they going to release it with all these tensions in, in the air uh, right now? I don't know. Um, so Syria claimed uh, Israel attacked targets. We read that. Um, Saudi newspaper calls on Washington to launch strikes uh, on Iran of its own. So Saudi Arabia is on board with uh, doing strikes against Iran right now. Um, They are not friends in the region. Um, Iran doesn't have a lot of friends outside of uh, Russia and Turkey and and the allied, you know, and and Syria, Bashar Assad. A state-aligned Saudi newspaper has called for surgical U.S. strikes in retaliation for alleged threats from Iran. So you have these countries in the Middle East calling, not only uh, threatening, but calling for strikes um, on uh, Iran. Uh, It says the editorial said U.S. strike in Syria when the government was suspected of using chemical weapons against uh, civilians set a precedent. So now the U.S. effectively, they're saying, has to go into uh, Iran. It added that it's clear that U.S. sanctions are not sending the right message and that they, uh, they must hit hard in reference to Iran. With elabor- without elaborating on uh, what specific targets should be struck. So Saudi Arabia is on board. Saudi Arabia is counseling effectively um, Trump to uh, strike Iran. And, and you have a huge buildup there. Is that buildup going to uh, decrease all of a sudden? Are they all of a sudden just going to go back to their uh, home ports um, You know, prior to the release of the peace plan? Uh, what is the relation there? Is there a significant strike or war which really prompts them and causes the people of, of uh, the Middle East to say, you know what, we do need peace. And you can see exactly why an Antichrist figure will come in and say, um, and really push this peace plan forward, thinking that if they can make peace with Israel and the Palestinians, uh, maybe they can make uh, peace in the rest of the world and in the Middle East. And that's what the whole world uh, wants. They want peace, peace. So you have all these things happening. You have uh, the Middle East again, uh, and I think it's correct to say, on the brink of war, what else would you call it, with all the weaponry in the area, with Iran uh, using its proxies to strike U.S. Uh, uh, targets, and uh, when, do, when does the U.S. Uh, strike back and, and uh, uh, target some Iranian assets? And, and honestly, I, I, th- I would not be surprised at all if over the next week or so we see some Um, strikes in Iran uh, in retaliation uh, for some of these, and especially if they hit and and kill U.S. soldiers. Um, I mean, that would be it. Um, That that would absolutely be crossing the red line. So um, in terms of Bible prophecy, I think this happens prior to um, the revealing of the peace plan. I think there's some significant escalation. Maybe it's enough to worry uh, about the the buildup and the war there, but I think something else breaks out. Uh, I I think Iran makes a move. And uh, something happens there. Uh, regardless, I think uh, you look at the prophecies, Isaiah 17, Ezekiel 38, uh, maybe, uh, I think uh, whatever corner Israel is pushed into that causes Isaiah 17 uh, is the corner that Russia, uh, Gog Magog, uh, Iran uses as an excuse to march against Israel. And so I'm not sure what that corner is uh, right now, uh, but it could be. <clears throat> retaliation that I, I, Iran has been saying that they would go after uh, Israeli allies in the region. That means Israel. <clears throat> and so if, if that occurs uh, and they go after Israel, then Israel would strike uh, probably most uh, the first thing 
uh, Damascus because uh, Iran's going to use its proxies to hit Israel, and so Israel's going to hit back at its proxies directly, uh, which are in Syria, and take out uh, Syria. And that's the fulfillment uh, of Isaiah 17 right there. And then that would be the cause, the excuse, if you will, for Gog Magog to march on Israel. <clears throat> Those uh, prophecies probably uh, directly related and would probably happen in quick succession as well. So we see a buildup of this. We see um, this coming down the pipeline. This is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. We may see this this summer. We're on the brink of war in the Middle East, and that's no understatement.